Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we're going to be talking about a science fiction film called Upgrade. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. The main character Gray is an old school mechanic who dislikes modern technologies. He's working on a muscle car for his high value client. He takes a break in the front yard and awaits his wife's return. She's clearly the opposite of her husband as she owns a self-driving car. They have great chemistry nonetheless as they share a kiss for her return. Their house is fully automated which her husband dislikes and continuously makes fun of. Gray needs to return the car he fixed to his customer and offers his wife to come together. He says that she would be impressed by the house his customer lives in. Personally, I would be a little uncomfortable bringing my wife to meet some rich impressive man. They arrive at the location and she jokes about his customer living behind a rock. They walk down into a cave-like structure and meets Aaron. The wife recognizes him immediately as the company owner of Vessel, a pioneer in artificial intelligence. The wife also works in a competing company named Cobalt, specializing in augmenting wounded soldiers. Aaron says that Cobalt will never compete with his company and he shows them his newest product. A computer chip that can do almost everything better than a human can. Later that night, Gray and his wife goes home in their self-driving car. They begin doing the fun stuff, taking advantage of their automatic car. Gray soon realizes that they are going in the wrong direction and tries to stop. But the system shows an error and proceeds to accelerate. They flip and crashes into the nearby structure. A group of men with face coverings shows up and drags both of them out. The leader grabs the wife to the side and reveals his face, not concerned about the nearby police drones. He criticizes her for looking down on his kind and shoots her in the chest in front of her husband. Gray screams in agony but is pinned to the floor. The leader comes and shoots him in the neck. He cries while seeing his wife draw her last breath. Three months later, Gray is now a quadriplegic and lives a miserable life. Everything in his house is automated for his convenience. Although the machines can take care of him, his mother chooses to remain by his side. She tries her best to comfort him as he cries in her arms. Gray visits the police station and meets Detective Cortez. She tells him that they haven't found the criminals yet. Gray becomes angry and mocks their incompetence even with all the drones that the police have. But she replies that the criminals can also use technology to block out their faces. She wants Gray to help, but he replies that he can't even stand up. Gray is deeply depressed and tries to commit suicide that night by telling the machine to overdose him with sleeping pills. It fails to kill him and he ends up in the hospital. As Gray sits on his hospital bed, he gets a surprise visit from Aaron. He offers Gray a chance to walk again via an experimental operation, using the latest technology and the microchip that he showed Gray earlier. Gray begrudgingly agrees. They operate on Gray's neck and implants the chip into his nerve system. The doctor tells Gray to not expect miracles right away as it can be a slow process. However, he begins getting control over his arms very quickly and eventually stands up to the amazement of everyone in the room. Aaron makes Gray sign a confidentiality agreement and tests out his abilities on the treadmill. Gray receives a package of evidence from Detective Cortez and begins reviewing them. As he looks onto the TV screen, he hears a voice in his head. Gray asks who it is, and the voice replies that he is Stem, the artificial intelligence that was implanted into his neck. Stem points out some details in the footage which he noticed, such as the criminal leader who shot his wife with a gun implanted in his hand, suggesting he's enhanced. Stem also recognizes the tattoo on one of the man's wrists and draws it out using Gray's hands. They are able to identify the person and Gray decides to pay him a visit. He breaks into the man's house and looks through his messages. Nothing important can be found except the location called Old Bones. He hears the door open and Stem tells him to hide behind the closet. The stranger walks in and notices something wrong. Stan tells him to strike now with the element of surprise, but Gray hesitates. The man turns around and slams Gray onto the floor. He asks who Gray is, and Gray replies that they killed his wife. Right before Gray is about to get killed, Stan tells Gray to allow him to take control. 
He agrees, and Stem is able to turn the tide right away. Gray fights robotically but with great efficiency. He pushes the man into the kitchen and smashes his head with plates and dishes. He grabs the knife from the man and splits his head open in a brutal fashion. Shocked about his murder, Gray panics and doesn't know what to do next. Stem advises him to clean up all the fingerprints, as he has made a record of all of them. At the police station, Detective Cortez sees the autopsy of the dead body. He was an ex-soldier with significant cybernetic enhancements from the tech company Cobalt. She looks through the drone footage and finds Gray arriving at the crime scene moments before the murder. She tries to enter his name as a potential suspect, but the system rejects her due to his medical status. Aaron meets Gray again, and he criticizes Gray's actions. Aaron is fully aware of his whereabouts and reminds him of the risks of being arrested. If that happens, he will go back to his wheelchair once again. Detective Cortez pays a visit to Gray on the pretense of buying his car. She interrogates him on the murder, which makes Gray extremely nervous. But Stan was able to guide him to avoid making any mistakes. Gray goes to the bar mentioned before as Old Bones and calls out anyone who knows about the murder of his wife. Everyone laughs at him except for one man who pushes him to the bathroom behind the restaurant. He tries to interrogate the main character by stabbing his legs, then his torsos, but receives no reaction until he gets to the face. Gray wants him to admit his involvement that night, which the man does with a smile. He then tells Stem to take over and proceeds to beat everyone very quickly. The man pushes Gray onto a wall, but he electrocutes him with the hanging wires. He interrogates the man for their leader's name and tries to use the knife, but couldn't. He tells Stem to take over, and he cuts the man everywhere. He tells Gray that the man who hired him is called Fisk. Stem tells Gray that Aaron has found their location and is shutting them down. They need to find a hacker to override the system. He tells Gray the necessary codes, which he writes down on his arm. They rush to a building and meet the hacker in a room where many people are playing VR. Gray asks why anyone would choose VR over the real thing, which the hacker responds that it's less painful. He rewrites the code for Stem and removes its restrictions. Fisk arrives at the building, and the hacker leaves Gray still paralyzed on the floor. Fisk and his buddy walks towards Gray, but Stem recovers just in time. He runs away from the gunfire onto the rooftop, while Fisk's man chases him. Gray stops and waits for him to get closer, and disposes him very quickly by shooting him with his own arm. Gray gets home only to see his mother waiting there. She's shocked at how he can still walk and wants to know where all the blood came from. Gray tells her everything and warns her about his confidentiality. She wants him to move on and start living, but Gray only has revenge on his mind. Detective Cortez visits Gray to his surprise and questions him about the new murders, which he was seen present again. He rebuts her suspicion, but Cortez secretly places an analog voice recorder in his pocket. Gray tells Stem that they must stop because they will get caught, but Stem is able to take control of his body without the input guards. He gets up and leaves the house to find Fisk and eliminate him. Detective Cortez heard their conversation and follows them behind. Stem is unable to disable her car because it's not electronic. After a series of car chases, Stem hacks into another car and causes Cortez to crash. She goes back to Gray's mother and asks her to explain everything. Gray finds Fisk in his apartment and points a gun at him. Fisk says that he did Gray a favor by turning him into a cyborg, as he's now more powerful than ever before. Gray just wants to know why he killed his wife. Fisk explains his wife was never the objective, and he was paid to sever Gray's spine. He only killed the wife mostly for pleasure. This angers Gray, and they get into a fist fight. They're quite evenly matched, and Gray is able to disable the nanobots' attack. But Fisk eventually gets the upper hand and points his gun hand at Gray. Stan tells him that they are out of options, and Gray must improvise now. He makes the connection that his first murder was Fisk's brother by their last name, and insults his brother's honor. 
This causes Fisk to get emotional and loses his upper hand, which Gray takes advantage of and kills him swiftly. He looks through Fisk's messages and finds his conversation with Aaron, suggesting that it was Aaron who hired them in the first place. He heads towards Aaron's house immediately. Gray finds Aaron sitting with a horrific expression. He demands to know why Aaron did all this to him, which Aaron denies being responsible. Detective Cortez shows up and points her gun at Gray, but is quickly dispatched by Stam. He continues to kill her, but Gray refuses and momentarily regains control. He tells Cortez to use the taser, which disables Stam for a brief moment. Aaron points the gun at Gray and explains that Stam was responsible for the whole thing. In fact, Aaron no longer controlled the company a long time ago, and he became a puppet. Stam's objective is to become human, so he needed a body to control. Gray jumps up suddenly and kills Aaron with the knife in his hand. He points the gun at Cortez, but Gray refuses and maneuvers the gun to point at himself. Suddenly, Gray appears in the hospital with his motor functions intact. He sees his girlfriend walking towards him and holds his hand. She tells him that he was out for many days. But this is only a dream which Stam has trapped Gray's mind in. Stam is now in full control, and he shoots Cortez in the chest, killing her. He pulls out the knife in his hand and exits the house. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.